there are a lot of animals in the world. And when one studies these animals, uh, one could represent them uh, to differing levels. I mean, certainly uh, there are some animals which are bigger than others. Um, but if one were to estimate, as this uh, paper published in 2018 in uh, the uh, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences uh, did, what's the just the overall biomass of each of the uh, animal groups to get an, an idea of their abundance on Earth? Um, it was estimated that the amount of wild birds is two megatons. Now, birds are, are certainly common, more common than, say, reptiles and amphibians, which don't figure uh, in uh, this list because they're lesser. But obviously, they have lighter skeletons. Wild mammals, seven megatons, uh, more than three times that of uh, birds. Uh, now, this would include uh, not just big mammals like bears, but also uh, rodents and bats, which would be the most abundant uh, mammals. Um, but then other animals could outnumber them. So many people don't even know what nematodes are. These are worms which are mostly microscopic. Um, but there are so many nematodes in soil, in water, that they would actually measure about 20 megatons. Now, humans are just one species, um, but because of our incredible population growth, we had had, say, a billion people on the planet in the early 1800s, two billion um, by uh, the early 1900s, but we're now approaching eight billion. Just the mass of humans on the planet is 60 megatons. So notice that this is almost 10 times the, uh, uh, the sheer mass of all wild mammals on uh, the planet. And so, you know, just our one species has certainly been successful at uh, a, you know, level which is, uh, you know, simply astounding compared to, you know, wild mammals and birds. Not only do humans have this enormous biomass, but so too does our livestock. Now, this would include pigs, cows, chickens, but the animals that we keep uh, to feed ourselves, you know, uh, 100 megatons. So, you know, this greatly exceeds the, the biomass of um, uh, the, the wild uh, vertebrates uh, on land. Now, uh, there are uh, other groups of animals, such as cnidarians. This would include not only jellyfish, and then hydra, but also corals and coral reefs, obviously, you know, can stretch for miles and, you know, tens of miles um, and, and weigh a great uh, deal. So cnidarians, uh, you know, significantly contribute to the biomass of animals. Annelid uh, worms uh, are estimated to be 200 uh, megatons. Mollusks which include clams, snails, octopi, and squid, are estimated at 200 uh, megatons. And fish at 700 megatons. So fish would be the most uh, abundant vertebrates in terms of uh, species and individuals, but also clearly in weight, where the number of uh, the weight of fish would outweigh all other vertebrates uh, combined. So, you know, certainly they significantly contribute to life on Earth. However, um, arthropods with their 1,000 megatons or a gigaton, uh, this would uh, then be far in excess. In fact, arthropods would represent about half of all of the animal biomass. Animal biomass is estimated to be about two gigatons in total, and arthropods represent uh, about one uh, gigaton of that. And so this was a um, estimate of the uh, biomass represented by the various groups of animals. And as one can see, arthropods and fish are by far uh, the greatest contributing groups to animal biomass.